John Sanders with Apex Insurance Group. Glad to have you along on this Wednesday. I had to take a moment and think. Yesterday, I went to a Jeff Allen concert, and it was funny. Uh, a great comedian. And um, But that's a whole other story. We'll leave it for a little bit later. Today, I want to jump right into our webinar. Got a couple of details first off. Um, don't forget about our agent forum where if you have questions, you can go ahead and discuss them and we'll get you feedback. And it puts agents in contact with other agents for discussion purposes. Uh, don't forget today, uh, we're moving forward, Apex Insurance Group in 2021. And uh, can you believe that we're almost to the end of January right now? And that's absolutely amazing. We couldn't wait for the year to get over. And what we're doing right now is we're one twelfth of the way through it. But call for help if you need it. Explore new closing ideas. Um, furthermore, maybe run a new product in uh, a new product illustration. And with that, um, I'll tell you what we've got Jeff Moore on the line. And let me unmute Jeff here. And whoops! And there you go. Um, I'm going to ask to unmute him. Let's see. Can you unmute yourself, Jeff? We've got Jeff Moore from American National. Uh oh. There you go. Uh -oh. Jeff, you just had yourself unmuted. There okay, you go. there. Yeah. Now let me bring the presentation back up for you. Yeah, I tell you what, Jeff and I have worked with uh, Jeff's worked with American National, and he's been our national sales manager uh, in the past. Awesome, awesome, awesome! And because of our new arrangement in one of our marketplaces with our federal and postal uh, market specific, Jeff is now our national uh, sales uh, director for Anico. Smartest guy that I know amongst all of the American National crew. So without any further ado, Jeff, if you're there, let's go ahead and kick it off. And uh, it's new integration for us because we're looking at Jeff's screen. We haven't done this on our webinar. So go ahead, Jeff, take it over from here. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, am I coming through okay, John? Absolutely. We hear you just fine. Okay. Super. Well, I appreciate the compliment. Um, I'm not sure I'm deserving of the... Uh, um, very, very knowledgeable on everything. Um, technology is going to be my weak note, but we'll get beyond that. Um, American National uh, definitely has it where it counts. Um, as the tagline says, we offer it all. Uh, I'm going to back up. 2017, uh, we crossed a milestone, um, 100, 120 billion of life insurance in force. That's something that not many carriers um, can, can do. I mean, we crossed over that 100 billion mark. Uh, very strong company, but we can't do it ourselves. We do it with our partners. So thank you for your business, your support, your interest in doing business with Anico. Uh, we've been doing it now going into our 116th year, hard to believe. Um, I'm going into my 19th year with American National. I've uh, spent uh, nearly the last 20 of the last 33 years that I've been in the business with one company. Uh, and that's because they've got it where it counts. Uh, we've been A or higher. So we've been in the top ratings with A and best, not 79 years, but actually 80 years now since we're in 2021. Um, top ratings with all the other agencies, uh, Standard & Poor. Uh, with Weiss, a B is a, is a top rating, believe it or not. Uh, no debt. We have no publicly issued bonds in the bond market, none of that. Um, we are a debt-free company. The only debt we have is policy owner loans. And when you look at our strength, our surplus is over 20% of our asset base. So we're way over reserved to the tune of 20 plus percent. That gives us a lot of strength to do a lot of things. Underwriting, express underwriting, which we'll talk about, uh, a, a solid life portfolio. We're gonna focus on life today. Uh, our expert office, I'll kind of give you some quick tips and tools on how to get around and do business with Anico, uh, incentives, and of course, we'll end on a strong note, sales support. 
Let's start with express underwriting. Up to age 65, under 250,000, best class is standard, but it's a true standard, either paper or electronic app accepted, and 80% non-med approvals. That's our standard express underwriting program. Eight out of 10 cases go through non-med. Now Express Plus, that picks up ages 18 to 50, but it goes up to a million in face amount. 51 to 60, we still can go up to half a million. And here, all rate classes are available. But to get the Express Plus underwriting to give you the chance at non-med, it does have to be electronic app. But I will say, our, our, our stats will say that uh, over the past couple of years, our Express Plus cases have been approved at a rate of 60% in one of our preferred categories. Now, the approval rate is lower because, again, we're approving higher face amounts and all rate classes are available. Now, that's our standard, I, I like to call it pre-COVID Express underwriting program. We've had that out since 2010, so well before any of this uh, stuff that we're involved with uh, today. Now enter into the picture. Oh, I always forget to tell you about smart underwriting. On your cases, if they come through with very little, uh, uh, when I say very little uh, medical history, nothing that requires medical records or an exam or anything, pretty clean ca uh, case, it doesn't even go to an underwriter. It's computer approved within uh, 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 one to two days. Right now, about 38% of our life business, all cases, all sizes, all ages, 38% last year were computer approvals. And those are typically standard or better. But enter into the picture just a year ago, hard to believe it's been a year, folks. We uh, started our Express, Express Plus COVID Action Plan. We started this back in February of 2020. As of today, 90% plus, 91% of those small express underwriting cases, not 80, 91% are now going non-med. The huge improvement are those larger cases. We're now approving cases up to a million non-med at a rate of 70% of them being approved non-med. Now, how do we do it? Well, we set out last year when we put this program in place with an objective to approve 50% more cases non-med through age 50 up to a million. And that was gonna, that, that included any current cases in-house at that time and all new cases. But to do that, some cases may get standard as opposed to a preferred if we got the exam or got medical records. Cases that otherwise might get standard might get a, a low table rating, table two, table three. But Unlike a lot of our competitors, if an exam or APS can be obtained at any time, we'll reconsider. If the case is currently open and they want to go out and get an exam and they don't want to take our, our COVID action plan offer, you know, what we like to call our non-med COVID offer, um, we'll allow them to get an exam. A lot of areas you can get paramed exams. People are doing it every day. And I've seen a lot of cases turn a, a standard into a preferred or a small table rating into a standard. Unlike our competition, we can do that. Now, if a case is medically underwritten and it's within six tables or better, um, many of these cases we can improve. Up to age 60, up to 5 million a face for non-smokers. And there are some high-risk areas, uh, um, underweight, uh, can uh, a lot of cancer issues or substance abuse or diabetes with uh, complications. Are, uh, those are some of the major ones that we, we can't do a lot with, but those are typically <clears throat> typically outside six tables. Most cases that are within six tables are in a rateable situation that we can improve if we can come up with uh, positive underwriting credits. And this is accessible on the website, but if we can get three or more positive credits from some of these major categories here, and you can see them on the, on the screen there, uh, build, blood pressure, cholesterol, blood profile, um, never smoked, uh, et cetera. 
Uh, if we can get three or more credits from what, from these categories, we can possibly shave anywhere from one to four rate classifications off that uh, off that original offer. Last year, we improved. It was something on the order of uh, uh, 700 plus cases, uh, and the average improvement was just over two two rate classifications. Now, how can I speed my business through Anico's underwriting? Well, we use AI. In fact, we use IBM's Watson. We started this about two years ago. This ensures expedient delivery. When you send an email in on a case, if it's done correctly, it goes directly to the case manager and underwriter that's signed on to that case. Now, how do I make sure that it goes to those folks? The major thing is in the subject line, put in the policy number. Don't use any special characters. Um, if it's a uh, term policy and it's electronic app, it's gonna start with a letter E. Everything after that is a zero. If it's a universal life, it's gonna start with U, E, and then everything after that is a number. So don't use the uh, letter O instead of a zero. Watson can't read that. Okay, Watson's very specific. You do that and you send one case per email, it will go directly to that case manager that's assigned to that case and the underwriter simultaneously. Nobody has to open the email and scan it in. It goes right to those folks. Use your email address and you've got one assigned to you. It's team national accounts. Team National Accounts, all one word, at AmericanNational.com. Now, our focus today will be our signature life series, starting with uh, signature guaranteed UL, um, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, guaranteed UL products in the industry today. One of the best term policies on the market still. And of course, our IUL. Um, second to none. For starters, the term. A lot of people think, okay, term is all about price. Well, it is, and we've got great price. But it's also about the underwriting. And as you just saw, we've got great express underwriting. Conversions. I'll tell you more about the conversions, but we got the best conversion pri uh, privileges in the industry the best living benefits on term, that all adds up to value. Uh, anybody can try to shop the internet for low ball term, but they're not gonna get the best value. Anico offers value. For starters, we offer annual renewable term or ART. It's gonna be the lowest starting premium. It gradually increases the first 10 years. So it's kind of like, a, like on a, a five year arm on a mortgage where you got a gradually increasing mortgage payment uh, five years. Well, this is a 10 year arm. They gradually go up, but it's guaranteed every year. And if you put it side by side with our 10 year level term, it's gonna be cheaper on a total outlay basis over the first five to seven years than if they bought a 10 year term. So it's great for a starter plan for someone who, who's gonna buy up or convert down the road but they need the coverage today. It's great for a business. Uh, a lot of businesses get a line of credit or a, a business loan at the bank. And typically those are short-term notes, three, four, five years. Well, here's your three-year, four-year, five-year term policy. If the need is longer, you've got a choice of 10, 15, 20, or 30-year term. Locked in the guaranteed level premium for the entire period. It's better for those longer term needs. If they can afford that level premium right up front and they know they're gonna keep it longer term, it's perfect for that. It can be a supplement to the GUL and IUL we're gonna talk about here in a moment um, when they're buying coverage and they, uh, they can't get all the coverage they need in permanent. Um, they can't afford to buy it all in permanent. So they fill some of those gaps with term. It's great for business insurance. A lot of small businesses looking for ways to cover the, uh, the, the liabilities that they need for, for key person, buy, sell, uh, et cetera, but uh, they don't have a lot of money to put into insurance. Level term is ideal for that. 
So with the signature term, you've got a choice of annual renewable, cheapest out there in the market, or 10, 15, 20, and 30 year. Minimum face is 100,000. 250,000 for preferred classes. Convertible to permanent for up to the earlier of the guarantee period, you know, the level premium period on the policy or age 65, whichever comes first. And if they convert within the first five years, they get a conversion credit. It equals the total term premium paid the year they convert. So if they've paid the full premium that year or paid a good, good uh, chunk of it, whatever they've paid is credited to the new permanent policy. Now I told you about term to term conversion, we've got it. The only company I know that offers it, term to term conversion for the ART. Within the first three years of an ART policy, provided they don't exceed the issue age, they can convert to a 20 year term up through age 55 or a 30 year term up through age 50. But the only company I know that offers that, and yes, full commission on conversions, whether term to term or term to permanent. And all three living benefits, uh, the only exception being uh, anybody that's tuning in from California, we don't have chronic illness on the term in California. And in New York, we simply don't have critical illness approved yet. So it's not just a price story, but it starts with that. Everybody always starts with price. We've got it. We're going to come up on those comparison screens, very competitive. And then you add the value in the package, conversion, living benefits, and you've got the best term package the industry has got to offer. Okay, moving over to GUL. I kind of like to call it the perm term, right? It's not a cash value policy. It's permanent coverage, but probably about the cheapest permanent coverage guaranteed all the way out for a lifetime if they want it. So they truly can plan for life with signature guarantee UL. It's issued to age 80, 18 to 80. Minimum face is 25,000. But I've noted at the bottom, 25,000 will include terminal illness only. If they want to have critical and chronic illness, the minimum face amount is 50,000. Choice of a guarantee, the shortest guarantee is age 95, longest guarantee is 121. And unlike most of the competitors out there, they've got not one, but two full months grace period if they miss a premium. So 61 days as opposed to the typical 31 days with most companies. Living benefits, all three, provided they hit the policy minimum. Our flexibility, and I'm gonna go into this a little bit more, but we're very competitive on both full pay and short pay, okay? Very competitive and very flexible. And you can even do a face reduction on the policy after 10 years without unwinding that policy guarantee. Target markets uh, are, are probably our sweet spot. Everybody asks me what our sweet spot is. We really are pretty competitive. Uh, 90 to 100% of the time, we're gonna be in one of the top three slots, but our sweet spot where we're almost always gonna be number one seems to be that guaranteed age 105, short pay or, or, uh, or full pay. Uh, our cash out rider is the best in class. Three options to exercise it, 15th year, 20th year, or 25th year. And on a rated case, provided it's not over table four or a flat extra of $5, uh, we still include the 15 year cash out option most guaranteed return of premium type products, if you've got a rating, typically if it's over two, two tables, there's no cash out. And it goes about the only company that offers it even on rated cases. As long as the case doesn't exceed age 70 at issue, it's gonna have the cash out rider, best in class. Here's how it works. On those smaller cases, 25,000 to just under a quarter of a million, You've got a 50% return of premium in the 15th year and 100% in the 20th or 25th year. Now the aggregate cap on a return of premium is 45% of the death benefit. That's far above what most companies offer for, and, and most that have a return of premium will have a max or a cap on that return of premium. 
theirs is typically 30 to 40% of the death benefit. It gets even better at the bigger case size, where it's a 65% return of premium in the 15th year and still 100% the 20th and 25th. But here, the aggregate cap jumps to 65% of the death benefit. So in most cases, they're going to get a full cash out in the 20th and 25th year. Most of our competition, if that individual is over age 65 or 70 uh, at issue, if they try to cash out that policy down the road, they're going to cap out, not with Anico. A quick school on how this works. Fortunately, the software will calculate it for you, but I'll kind of run through it. So, because this is in the marketing brochure, and if the client asks how it's done, you can speak to it. We're just basically adding up the premiums. So, in the 15th year, based on this 65 year old buying a half million dollar GUL to 105, they've paid just under 203,000 in the first 15 years. That 65% uh, return of premium would be 131,943. We apply the aggregate cap, which is 65% of that half million dollar death benefit. So the most they'll ever get back in any of the exercise years is 325,000. So they meet that easily the 15th year, they, they would not cap out. 20th year, they paid in over a quarter of a million of premium. They'll get that full 270,000 back because it's well under that cap. 25th year, they've paid in 338,000. That actually exceeds the cap of 325,000, but not by much, only by about 4%. They're still going to get a 96% return of premium if they decide to ca uh, cash that out. Now, the software, uh, typically about five, six pages into the software is the signature page, and that's where you'll find these uh, values. Um, I circled, double circled the word guaranteed because that's a powerful word for a client. This is a great selling page in the illustration. You basically tell that client, you pay your premium, and we'll, the company will guarantee you 15 years into the future, if you want to cash out your policy, you'll get a check for just under 132000 if you want to return the policy and cash it in in the 20th year, Anika will cut you a check for 270000 plus. And 25th year, you'll get a check for uh, 325000 So if you want guarantees for cash out, you got them with Anico, best in the business. I said we're competitive and we are, even after the repricing that everybody went through this past summer, uh, we still top the charts on short pay and full pay. Uh, just kind of pointing to a, an up point to middle of the pack here, the 40 year old, if they were doing a continuous pay on this $100,000 guaranteed to 121 monthly mode. Monthly premium is 105.35 all years guaranteed to 121. For only $22 a month more, that same individual could pay up this policy at age 65. You know, 30 years ago when I got into the business as an agent, we didn't have a lot of universal life. We had several whole life products with my company, and we sold the heck out of the old life paid up at 65 concept. And we actually had a whole life product called life paid up at 65. There's a lot of people that like to have some of those fixed expenses paid up. Our GUL is very convenient in that respect. You can do that. But how about flexibility with a GUL? How about if you got a GUL where you can solve for the continuous pay premium, which we just did, level death benefit guaranteed for the same period, all the way out to 121, but tell your client that down the road, if they get to a point where they just wanna say, I, I'd really have to stop paying premium. I don't want my policy to lapse. They can stop making premium payments and reduce the death benefit. Now they can do that anytime after 10 years. All they have to do, you, you or they is request Anico, calculate it for me. What does the death benefit have to be reduced to for me to stop paying premium and have a paid up policy? That's right. Like most whole life policies, they all espouse to the benefits of 
reducing the death benefit and having a paid up policy. In fact, there was a big article in Brokers World uh, for the uh, December issue that spoke to that. You can do it with Anico's GUL and for a lot less than most whole life policies. So when you look at the GUL, you've got accelerated or express underwriting. Many cases up to a million could be non-med. You've got flexibility on the death benefit, dial up your guarantee, 95 to 121, full pay or short pay it. Return a premium, the best, and we call it guaranteed cash out, but return a premium, the best option uh, on a GUL product out there today, no additional cost. Living benefits up to 2 million and priced uh, basically uh, for perfection. We are the lowest premium to age 100 over half the time. And 90% of the time, we're going to be in the top three. That's what I call price com competition. So when you think of Anico for GUL, we're in it to win it. And we're going to continue any repricing that we do is to keep us at the top of the pack. Performance IUL. Uh, we've been in the IUL space going back uh, really to the middle of 2009. What are the advantages of uh, our performance IUL? Well, let's start with low cost. You wouldn't think of cost, policy cost, but just like they do in, in investing in the investment world, you know, Vanguard was famous for coming in with low cost index funds that performed. Well, that's kind of the same thinking with us, low cost win at the end of the day. Strategy selection with proven performance, guarantees. You wouldn't normally think of an IUL, a non-guaranteed uh, uh, assumption policy with guarantees, but we got them. And policy loans, fixed or variable. So let's start with the policy costs. Premium charge, 6%. That's about industry average. A little bit on the low end, but uh, definitely not on the high end for sure. The key here is that's also our guaranteed maximum charge. Unlike a lot of our competition, we don't have two sets of books. We don't have current and that guaranteed book that we don't show you, current equals guaranteed. Monthly policy fee, five bucks a month, 60 bucks a year. Current equals guaranteed. Monthly expense charge, now that's gonna vary by the case, male, female, date of birth, underwriting class, face amount, all that. It's gonna vary. But the key here is current equals guaranteed. Accumulation value charge, that's part of the surrender charge and it goes away after 10 years. Current and guaranteed. So with Anico, you've got a no trust me here. Current equals guaranteed. No, no trust me's out there, no uh, surprises. I looked at uh, a competitor's uh, illustration a couple days ago. I was astounded about uh, uh, 10 pages back, it showed their current cost of insurance and, and so forth. And then about 27 pages back, buried in the very back, showed the guaranteed. My gosh, their guaranteed costs ran all the way through the policy, all the way to age 100, and they were much higher. Anico, over half the policy cost that you're looking at there will fall off after 10 years. That's what you call trust and uh, integrity when it comes to IUL. Further uh, to boost the trust of your clients, we've got solid guarantees to weatherproof your IUL. We've got this cumulative policy rate guarantee. It basically says, Worst case scenario, the client's got a lifetime 2% guarantee on the policy, lifetime 2%. So at any point on death or surrender, if they go and, and, and decide they're going to either, uh, the policy's either surrendered or there's a death claim, we look at actual performance. Worst case scenario, the client's going to get 2% compounded return for the life of the policy. But if we hit the really, really bad times in the market, and you know, I'll tell you, back in uh, February and March of last year, we all kind of thought we were headed to the abyss. 
Fortunately, we didn't, but what if that type of situation persisted for a long time? Would your clients have their coverage with other companies? What do these other companies guarantee for an IUL? I'll tell you, they guarantee a lot less. Those that have these, these floor guarantees like we have here, they're typically 0.25%. I've seen a couple that are 1%. I haven't seen anybody with a 2% lifetime guarantee. With that guarantee, many of the cases you illustrate will run 20 to 30 years on the guarantees at 2%. Here's a nothing, nothing special. It's a two hundred thousand dollar death benefit, male, forty standard. If you look at the cumulative policy interest rate guarantee ledger here, at two percent, look in the middle column, that guaranteed column that typically runs out early on most most uh, illustrations. But if you look in this guarantee ledger, we're in year thirty seven before this thing potentially is, you know, before it's projected to lapse. If we look at the current, it's going to go 42 years. That's impressive. And that's included. There's no additional cost. It's not a secondary, no lapse guarantee that they have to pay for or take lower caps or rates for. It's included. It's a contractual guarantee with Anico. Strategies. We've got a fixed account. One year, uh, one year rate among the highest in the industry. It's currently 3.5. We've got four S&P 500 index strategies, all one year strategies, very simple, but they'll work in just about any market environment. No minimum allocation and the flexibility to reallocate monthly. And once the policy costs for the current year are met, we sweep the very next month from our from that we call it a sweep account. Most companies have a, a fixed account. When the premium goes in, that money sits there and covers the policy costs. Most companies will, will sweep or allocate those funds quarterly. Some only do it on the anniversary date. Very few will sweep or move that money into allocations on a month-to-month -month basis. Anico is one of the few that does, and we have the performance that proves it. But let's take a look at the strategies. Fixed account. Up, down, sideways market, doesn't matter. You know, we could have a market like yesterday. We could have a market like today. Doesn't matter. Market goes up 10%, they get three and a half. Market goes down 10%, they get three and a half. Obviously, this is what you call volatility control. They're going to get a positive return every month, every year. Value cap, this is our benchmark strategy. And that's important to remember, benchmark. Carriers under these new AG49 guidelines have to select their benchmark strategy because that's what uh, their illustrated rate is tied to. It's a very simple strategy to use. S&P goes up. They get 100% of that gain, dollar one, day one, up to a cap. The cap is currently 9.5. The market goes down. They get none of the down. They flatline at zero. Currently, we're illustrating our benchmark rate, 5.92%. Uncapped with a spread. Here again, it's tied to the S&P. They're going to get 100% of the S&P performance above that spread. Okay, above that spread. The spread's kind of high right now. I won't sugarcoat it. It's 7.75. Um, it's been a lot lower. Um, just a few months ago, it was about three points lower. But they still got the added protection of zero if the market drops. But in those really up years like 2019 and even 2020, um, well above the spread in those years, you can get a much higher return. Newest strategies we added uh, a little over a year ago, November of 2019, we added the multiplier strategies. Here they've got an opportunity for a much larger percentage of the S&P gain uh, up to a cap because at the back end, we're adding either 24% or 60%, depending on which multiplier they select. They can select both or one or, or the other. Those numbers, 24 and 60%, those strategies are contractually guaranteed. Any policy issued today 
regardless of what happens down the road with AG49 or anything else, those are contractually guaranteed. Um, the cap is 11.5, but because they have to be, our, our illustrated rate has to be tied to the benchmark, it's 5.92 for every strategy. So why would they choose a multiplier versus other strategies? Well, it's one thing to, to illustrate at a set rate, but it's another thing to perform. They get actually what we, what we re, uh, return, and you'll see what the actual returns are here in just a moment. But this enhances a return in a lower, lower performing marketplace. And if it's a much higher performing market, like the last couple of years, you cap out and you pick up another 24, 60% on the back end. You turn a, a bad market into an okay market and you turn an okay market into a much better market. You capture more of the gains. So here's an example of how it works. We take 100% participation rate in the S&P up to a cap, the cap is 11.5, and we tack on 24%. That's the multiplier. Multiplier plus, same formula, but on the back end, we're going to tack on another 60%. I know we can only illustrate 5.92, but we can actually return a lot more, and we have. In an 8% market, the multiplier strategy would bump it up to just about nearly 10%. The multiplier plus would take it to 12.8. Let's say the S&P went up 12. The multiplier would bump that up to 14 and a quarter. The multiplier plus would take it up to nearly 19%. In several of these cases, we're exceeding the caps. We're exceeding the caps, and that's how the multiplier works. It takes you beyond the traditional cap. Now, we do have an asset fee in the multiplier strategies much lower than our companies offering similar strategies. In fact, our guarantees, which are highlighted there at the bottom, are lower than what most companies' current charges are. That's our contractual max at the bottom. What we're actually charging on the multiplier strategy is 1.9. So the client still has over 98% of their premium going to work for them. On the multiplier plus, just over three and a half percent. So they still got over 96% of their premium working for them after the fee. So if you took a uh, example with the multiplier and you assume a 10% gain in the market, and that's under the cap, right? Under the cap. So 24% gain takes that to 12.4, subtract out the fee, 10.26% return. Still better than what the S&P actually returned even after the fee. We take the multiplier plus strategy, take that 10%, tack on 60%. So now we're up to a gross return of 16. Even after we deduct the fee, we're sitting at just under 12%. So these strategies, because of the, uh, uh, the boost they have on the back end, and, a, and just a, an average to decent market can way, way outperform and more than compensate for their fees. So big picture, how's Anaco done over the last, uh, in our case, last uh, nine years? I look at full years. So we went 2010 through 2019. I haven't got the 2020 numbers yet, but I'll have those shortly. Fixed account, annualized 4.34%. Obviously, it's positive every year. Value cap, point to point with a cap, it's annualized, and this is actual crediting history, 8.22%. It's been positive nearly 80% of the time. Uncapped with a spread, also better than 8%, and positive also 78% of the time. Now, the new multiplier strategies using the current caps on those strategies and using the same time period, they would have performed uh, much better than any other strategy we've got. Now, we didn't have them out over that full nine year period. So to be fair, how do they perform in their first year with us versus the S&P? 
S and P did just over 16 and a quarter last year. Both strategies capped out. We had on the uh, uh, the multiplier, and uh, we've got 12.7 for the multiplier strategy and nearly 15% for the multiplier plus. Not bad performance in their first year with Anico. Now, how will AG49, the latest rendition, how will that affect us? Well, the two major uh, events to come out of that, the illustrated rate, as I, I pointed to earlier, has to be based on a benchmark index strategy. Carriers have to select what their benchmark strategy is, our most consistent uh, and probably easiest to, uh, to track strategy is the, uh, the value cap, point to point with a cap. So we selected that. Uh, and then the other thing comes into loans. Variable loans, a lot of carriers play games with those. They built in higher spreads by putting bonuses, extra interest. Well, AG49 came in and basically said, that spread has to be the same for all carriers. The spread between what we're charging for that variable loan and what we're crediting to those loan amounts. More detail. First, let's start with the illustrated rate. All index strategies have to be based on a benchmark strategy. Ours is gonna be the value cap, which is 5.92. So the credited returns have to be illustrated at 5.92, but the actual credited returns that the policy gets, they'll be more like what we just looked at on the historical performance we actually have way out delivered versus what we promised. I'd much rather be in a position to under promise and over deliver. And that's what Anico has done when you look at all of our strategies, particularly the uncapped and the multiplier strategies, we have way over delivered. Now, how does this variable loan crediting work? And this will make more sense when we look at the loans. Um, variable loan crediting rate, and this is, this is uh, when they take out a variable loan, the interest that we assume in the illustration that will be credited to those variable loan proceeds, it can only be 50 basis points higher than the rate we're charging on that loan. Before you could be up to 100 basis points. Uh, so AG49 cut that in half. Based on our current variable loan rate of 2.85, that means that the net earned rate that we, we will illustrate on a variable loan will be 3.35. This is an area where a lot of carriers played a lot of games and projected unrealistic variable loans. We didn't play that. So let's turn to those loans and how we uh, actually handle them. We've got a fixed loan option. It's non-participating, which means the money is uh, pulled out of the contract and it creates a new loan collateral account. It's 0% net interest day one because in that loan collateral account, we're gonna contractually charge 6% interest and credit 6% interest. So the net effect is zero net cost. It's a more conservative option because it is non-participating. Those, excuse me, those funds will not participate in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, those funds will not participate in whatever uh, indexing allocations they've got. But, the client knows that even if interest rates climb out of the ballpark, they're, cu they're capped at a 0% net cost. Variable loan is a participating loan. The money does not leave the contract. We're not creating a new policy. I mean, uh, uh, we're not, uh, those, those funds are not remaining in the, <clears throat> are, are not being in a new account, excuse me. They're remaining in the policy and they are earning index crediting returns, same as any other funds in the policy. I know we can only assume in the illustration with that spread requirement, but in actuality, when that client takes out a variable loan, whatever their indexing returns are on the year, the full accumulation value gets that index crediting. So again, it's a case of under promise over deliver. This is a floating interest rate it's set monthly and uh, it's actually 2.85. So I got to update that. It, uh, the, the other slide I showed you on AG49 was correct. It, it just bumped up to 2.85. But that said, it's still very low. Um, we've, we've had this product out for nearly 10 years. 
And I've seen rates as high as five and a half percent on variable loans. We're half that today. So quickly how it works with a fixed loan. Uh, if they take out, let's say a hundred thousand dollar loan, interest is going to be credited to the loan collateral account at the end of the year. So at the end of the year, that loan collateral account will show 106,000 positive. We will also charge 6% interest to the loan interest account, the other side of the ledger. That'll show a deficit or a debit of 106, okay? The two net each other out, they've got a zero. Any money they pay against that loan, whether it's interest only or the loan principal only, that money basically goes back into the policy and reduces the loan balance accordingly. Okay, variable loan option. Unlike a fixed loan, no collateral account is created. The accumulation value remains fully allocated to the, uh, to the accounts. So if we take a loan of 100,000 in our prior example, and we use our, we'll use the 2.7% rate. And let's assume that the account value earns a, a composite rate of 10% return. When we look at the indexing allocations, the overall return that year was 10. That means on the borrowed money, even though we can only show that 3.35, you know, with the spread requirement of AG49, we can only illustrate that. What we're actually going to give the client is about double that, 7.3. So the client's going to get what they actually get. So again, the variable loan participating option, excellent in a low interest rate environment. Uh, if, if the loan uh, is still uh, in existence when they die or surrender the policy, it's just a lien on the policy. It'll basically uh, be uh, taken out of cash values to pay off a loan and they surrender the policy, go on their way. If it's a death benefit or a living benefit claim, it basically is taken against that claim amount. But this allows their funds all of their funds to continue to reflect indexed earnings in, a, uh, in the environment we're in today. They can switch back and forth between loan types up to five times in the life of the policy. So if they decide at some point they started, uh, the loan started life as a variable loan, they don't wanna pay it off, they can just switch it on any policy anniversary date and we'll change it from variable to fixed or we'll change it from fixed to variable. Living benefits, up to 16 critical illness eligibility uh, triggers, partial and full settlements available in the same year, included on rated cases through table four, lump sum benefits for all three, critical, chronic, and terminal, up to 2 million, and through 2019, just in a three-year period alone, 2016 through 2019, we paid out over 20 million in claims. So not just a company that promises living benefits, but a company that pays. Uh, critical illness approved in all states except con uh, Connecticut and New York. As long as they have the $50,000 uh, face amount and they're not over a table four, they will have critical illness and 16 qualifying events. Uh, the three that are highlighted in red are not available in California is, is qualifying events. So California, we got 13. Outside of California, we got 16 qualifying events. Far more than any company offering critical illness today. Chronic illness, uh, pretty typical in the industry. Uh, we look at the six activities of daily living. If they can't do two or more of those, they're gonna be eligible in some regard. If they're severely or cognitively impaired, uh, that's gonna be an almost immediate uh, eligibility. Uh, we can do lump sum payment on chronic illness. We don't, uh, we don't cap it uh, annually at an installment um, amount like a lot of companies. Many companies do that with a gimmick that is, it's guaranteed to be no less than a certain percentage of the death benefit, but you've gotta take it over 10 years. Anico, we basically say, look, the more severely impaired you are, the higher amount of the death benefit will accelerate 
and will accelerate at lump sum. The only waiting period is 90 days. Uh, policy 50,000 or above is gonna include it. Um, as we pointed out earlier, uh, in California, we do not have it on term. Terminal illness, uh, 24 uh, months of, of life expectancy or less, and it's gonna be considered a terminal uh, event. Florida and Connecticut, the definition is 12 months. Uh, there's no rating limitation here. Any policy that's issued uh, 25,000 face amount or higher will have terminal illness included, and there's no waiting period. So how do we calculate the benefits? Well, we start with the death benefit, and the majority of the calculation is the actuarial discount. 80% of the calculation is measured based on how impaired their life expectancy is. If their normal life expectancy is, let's say, 25 years, and this event knocks about 15 to 20 years of that life expectancy off, that's a severe, almost terminal event. That's going to be a large percentage claim. If it barely changes the life expectancy whatsoever, then it's going to be more along the lines of a minor to moderate uh, event. Um, the administration fee, not, not going to exceed $500 um, in any state. Some states, it's less. And you've got an accelerated benefit amount. Now we do both uh, full and partial uh, uh, claims. And with any claim they file, we automatically, unless they start out requesting a partial, if they request just to uh, you know, submit a claim to see what they're gonna get, we automatically will give them a quote for a 100%, a 50% and a 25% uh, policy acceleration. Uh, if a partial benefit is requested, in other words, a partial uh, settlement of the policy, uh, and there's any outstanding policy debt or there's any cash value in the policy, we just on a pro rata basis consider that, that cash value or that outstanding loan in the calculation. Uh, the cash value would be added to the uh, proceed amounts. Uh, the loan amount would be uh, taken away from it. If it's a case of a, a guaranteed UL, uh, we'd look at the cash out benefits. If they did a partial uh, settlement of the policy, We'd adjust that policy going forward. We'd adjust the face amount and the guaranteed cash out, cash out provision on a pro rata based on the percentage of acceleration. So we're essentially just, you know, if they do a partial, we're issuing a new policy at a lower face amount and the premium will be based on that if it's a fixed premium policy and the death benefit and any other um, uh, ancillary benefits. Uh, the ABR guide, number 10743, picture of it there in the upper right corner. It's a comprehensive overview of the ABRs. This is consumer and agent approved. It's a great selling piece. It's got frequently asked questions. So it'll answer a lot of your clients' questions. A detailed explanation, but in uh, much more simplified or layman's terms on benefit calculation. Procedures for filing a claim. Tax implications of the riders and case studies based on actual claims, not made up claims. These are actual claims. Um, there'll, there'll be four uh, cases pointed to in the brochure. Uh, the names and the pictures have changed, but these are four actual claims. Uh, the one in the upper right is an IUL claim. Um, it was a large one uh, for a doctor that was uh, diagnosed with uh, stage, stage three or stage four cancer. Um, that was about uh, five years ago. He's still alive today. He's still in practice. In fact, it saved his practice. The fact that he's able to cash in his policy and get nearly a 90% uh, acceleration, um, it, it took care of him. So great stories, real stories. Now, running illustrations, just kind of more of a quick where to go. This won't be in-depth illustration training, but I'll, I'll show you where to get it. Uh, the term and GUL quick quote or term GUL quote. This is nice. Um, all you have to do when you go out to the website is click on expert office, click on the term GUL quote. There's no login. You don't have to download software. There's no agent login required. You go out to that website. It's quick. It's easy. Um, there's two entry screens. 
The first one is client input. And there you can select just to show the term or the GUL or both. Put in the state, put in their date of birth, male or female. A product information on the second screen where you're putting in tobacco use, face amount, underwriting class. You can do uh, both products and it'll quote all underwriting classes except no substandard. And then premium modes, uh, you can do monthly, bi-weekly, uh, in case you're in the federal market, you can do bi-weekly or you can do annual. Then you just uh, hit calculate there at the bottom and it'll instantly pop up a screen that will show you the term. If you did both, it'll show you the term and the GUL. It'll quote all plans automatically that they are eligible for based on their age. Uh, in the case of uh, term and GUL, it'll show the modal premium. If you selected monthly, it'll show the monthly premium for all of them. Uh, for the term, it'll also show the annual premium. And then if you want to go right to an e-app from that screen, you click on life e-application. It will take you to the login at that point. You'll have to log in, but you can go right into an expert app and do an application for the client. And you can actually do this on your iPad or your iPhone, believe it or not. Very simple. Now, Expert Illustrator, that's our full illustration system. Uh, you can run illustrations for all life and annuity products. Now here you do have to log in. That's the first step. Login is in the upper right corner there. Once you've logged in and when you get appointed with Anico uh, in your welcome materials, welcome letter or email that you get, it'll actually give you your website login and your uh, password will default to the last six digits of your tax ID number. Uh, to run illustrations, you'll go to that expert office tab, select expert illustrator, and you're off and running. It'll pull up the dashboard and you can create a new client and you can illustrate everything we offer. Now, where can I get training? We've expanded the expert office training to make it much easier for you. Uh, from the website, you'll go to that agent resources tab there at the top. It's kind of slightly grayed and you'll click on expert office training. It'll pull up a, a field just like this and you can get training on just about everything within the expert office, including the expert illustrator our electronic app, which is called Expert App, our electronic scanner, which will scan any documents or new applications. If, you, if you've got a paper app or you've got a requirement to submit on a case, you can expert scan rather than email. It puts it right in the file so the uh, case manager has it. They don't have to scan it in. New business, you can go look at all your pending life and annuity cases and see where they are. You'll get alerts on those cases every time something's updated. You'll get an email alert on the case. Uh, you can look at your enforced business as well, and you can run reports on your book of business and, and all kinds of things. You'll look at your commission reports because that's where your commission statements will be. So if you click on Expert Illustrator, say after this, I want to get some training on that Expert Illustrator, it'll pull up short videos, downloadable guides, uh, you have a general expert illustrator overview, how to short pay a GUL. We were talking about how competitive that is. This shows you in three minutes uh, how to do a quick pay on a GUL, a regular GUL illustration, or an IUL illustration. These are nice walkthrough tutorials, uh, YouTube videos, and then several downloadable guides on the expert illustrator. Incentives, um, as I said at the start, um, this I'm going into my 19th year with the company. We have had cash is king every year I've been with the company. Um, it's a great, uh, great contest. It started strictly for the annuities. We started adding life insurance to it a few years ago. So here it is for the life insurance sales. 
multiple levels. Minimum is four, uh, I'm sorry, five cases. Minimum is five policies. It started January 1. It runs to March 31st. You've got multiple levels. The max is uh, 3,000 in bonuses. So if you, uh, if you did 70,000 of cumulative premium by March 31st, and this is annualized target premium, so not collected, annualized target premium, um, you pick up the max check. But you could, you, you'll start uh, participating in it with as little as 10,000 in premium. A uh, little thing we did differently this year, this is for policies written between January 1 and March 31, but you've actually got till April 15th, good old tax day, to pay for the policies. So if a case written by March 31st goes issued and paid by April 15th, it counts. Um, if you write enough cases and enough premium, uh, you could be one of our top 80 that we take every year to our, our conference. Uh, for the 2021 production year, our conference destination is the uh, Baja, the Rosewood Baja Resort in the Bahamas. Um, we take those trips in May. So in May of 2022, for anybody that makes the top 80 this year, you and a guest will go five days, four nights. And it takes, if you're, if you're primarily a life producer, it takes about 150000 or more of target premium, and you will almost always be in the top 80. So it kind of gives you an idea of what it takes to rank. Uh, appreciate your time today. Um, I know it's been kind of a long one, but we, we kept it within an hour, and that's what, that was my goal. Um, my contact information there on the left, uh, your field support team, uh, the only department in the company that does not have voicemail. You will get a live body within a minute or two, um, usually right away, but no longer than a minute or two whole time, even at peak. Uh, there's their email address. And then there's your life new business team for team national accounts. And Kim Wiggins is your, uh, your case supervisor for the team. Uh, she's awesome. She's got a great team behind her. Um, so at this point, I think I'll flip it back over to my, my uh, pal, John and, and uh, entertain questions. Well, I'll tell you what, um, we're not set up for a two way kind of a question thing. But I know that Kim does an outstanding job and agents, we've got uh, multiple agents, uh, many of them online now, will have this webinar, Jeff, uh, posted to okay. our YouTube channel. But I do oh, thank super. you for your time and you are available to assist um, and you do welcome calls from agents, correct? I sure do. I welcome calls and emails. Not quite as good on the texting, but I'll do my best. But emails, calls, um, I'm there for you. Well, and probably a lot of us prefer the emails simply because we can attach documents within it. And uh, and the thing that I like is you're capable of discussing both a little bit about the uh, federal postal side for those agents on that side of the fence as well as the uh, straight civilian non-government side. So that works out well for us. And um, Yep. And Jeff, I thank you very much for your time and your participation, and I am sure you'll be hearing from our agents coming up. So again, I, uh, I thank you so very much. All right. Thank you, John. Okay, Thanks, thank everybody. You. And folks, I'll tell you what, I appreciate Jeff taking his time to be out here on today's phone, uh, on today's webinar. And uh, I want to, uh, we ran a little bit long. That's okay. Uh, good information that was available to all agents. Next week coming up is Ron's webinar on Are You Teachable? You know, I, uh, I'm going to do a, a, either a webinar or a video blog on this, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, so many times when, when I got married, uh, that wasn't the end of me courting my wife. You know, I just didn't say, hey, I got the prize, that's it, I'm done, up on the shelf you go. Well, that's, uh, that's not what I did on my second marriage. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, Ron's going to look at, are you teachable? And um, because you have to continue to learn, you have to continue to be molded, you have to continue to grow and be teachable as an agent as your career goes on. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not the same married guy that I was 30 years ago. 
And uh, I'm certainly not the same agent that I was uh, when I got started in the industry. So Ron, without a doubt, is going to uh, give us some uh, good teaching from his perspective. He's our training uh, partner, and uh, he'll help out there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Basic Agent channel on YouTube, as well as uh, our webinar will be posted there a little bit later on as soon as we get it uploaded. I thank you all for attending. This is uh, Ron's and my contact information. If you're not part of the Apex Insurance Group team, uh, I am the handsome guy on the left-hand side of the screen. Also, if you're not an agent yet with Apex Insurance Group, we certainly invite you to register to gain back office access to the um, to Apex Insurance Group. We've got a lot of good things coming up, and we've got a lot of great things in store. So I thank you very much for your attention and your participation in today's webinar.